be one of those soldiers on the front line just pushing that forward. So that's what I've been doing since 1996, uh, 1997. So it's been about 13, 14 years. So you mentioned you're a lifelong horror fan. How'd you get into horror? You just found that? You had a family member that was into it? or what? Uh, I've been into horror for a long time. I, uh, I've had my dad to thank for that. Um, he's uh, turned me on to the Twilight Zone. Outer Limits, we would watch Star Trek. Uh, he would read Ray Bradbury's book. He would read uh, Clive Barker books. He would read Stephen King. He's a huge Stephen King fan. And he would drink beer afterwards, and he would tell me about what he read. He would read the Twilight Zone magazine. He turned me on to uh, what influenced that. Uh, right off the back, I'd have to say Black Sabbath, one of the first bands coming into my ears of just heavy metal, dark sounding misfits, Ramones. Uh, I have to give uh, White Zombie credit too because they were out for me and he was doing his part for horror. So it's just a culmination of different inspired and uh, we just uh, were being picked up by a Russian record label uh, called Satan Narsa Records and they're going to be putting out in July luckily. So all of you cool. creeps out there should uh, check it out and pick it up. So where can we check you out online? Where can we buy your music? And where can we... you become aggravated. When you become aggravated, you destroy some of your props. When you destroy some of your props, you need to get new props. When you look for new props, you find the Necronomicon. When you reach to fill in, which is cool, because they use the line entertainment as fill in. So I got to go back to the slaughterhouse and the corn maze where I started out my first year. Uh, one night I actually got to fill in back in the finale of the Bates Motel. Again, here I got to fill in twice in the corn, and my final night I got to work the the hayride. I was out in the camper scene, which I never worked the hayride before. And hayride's a completely different animal, just dealing with you know tractor after tractor, and it, it's just a sort of different vibe. But it's cool. Um, it was the, like I said, camper scene where there was a puzzle set up and I had to rip everything basically down, weather the storm, and set everything up basically Halloween afternoon. I called you, I was like, hey, I'm getting lit, I'm trying to reset everything up. And uh, we had a great time, that was nice. It, 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 we had actually a record amount of trick-or-treaters that night. And uh, we're going to talk about some comic books, including Constantine and Elvira some TV, like The Walking Dead, upcoming flicks, and movie reviews, including the American screen. The end of the, the final episode, but you know, they came back, and obviously it's just a huge rift between, you know, Rick and Laurie. And I, I guess I didn't expect that that was going to be like the way they were going to start off their so-called relationship at this point. And Laurie kind of annoys me because she reminds me of my ex-girlfriend, and uh, it's a fucking war. Total war. Anyway. Wow. With everybody else but me! No, no, I'm like, oh my god. No, but what I'm going to do, I'm sorry. Hey, you guys are going to be in the game. Hey, you guys are going to be in the game. He's not four characters at the prison. Have you seen this season? I mean, there really has been no character development. No. they were in that in Woodbury. Yeah, so. Well, I think, I, that's what I was going to say to you, I mean, in terms of any sort of character arc, I think Merle wants to attract strong people to Woodbury. He wants to attract and retain citizens in his, you know, opinion who can help them, who can be service to him, you know, who can keep the community safe. Now, I think at this point he thinks Andre, given the fact that she, you know, now again, is he also working her because he knows that she knows in terms of, you know, everyone else, you can do the 
want to further his own production and, you know, solidify his own power, perhaps. You know, so I, I'm hoping, as I said, that this is going to continue into the fourth season um, because I think there's just way too much... Years on the road, completely irrelevant at this point because everybody shares. 
and it's awesome, and I love it. And it's it's neat to be a part of you know a community where nobody shared, and then we said, hey. We're in the garage, and then we're from the garage to the driveway, and then to the front yard. They just kept getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> so every year, it's like the front yard is something new. My family, my dad, they've all been very supportive of everything I've done from 15 years old, you know, all the way to now. I come over here periodically uh, to help him when I, when I know he's really busting time. Sometimes I'll arrive here and he's already here. He just happened to decide to come in and clean and work. And Jeff is just so creative. I came home from work one day, I pulled in the driveway and he had the garage door up and he was making fountains with the head with the blood running out and you circulate into it. I said, what are you doing? I just sold the floor to you. <laughs> I think I'll never forget that. People that are doing honor attractions are really trying to immerse people in that movie experience and bring that motion picture experience to life. Anybody can go to the Thank you. 